Ladies and gentlemen, Ranked in Valor is coming incredibly soon in about a week's time, so I thought I would give you the best tips and tricks that you can have in order to dominate your ranked placements. If you do poorly in your ranked placements, you could end up multiple tiers of ranks lower than you think you belong. And if you pop off in your ranked placements, it could set you up with a high rank, starting your successful journey through the Valorant ranked system going forward. Speaking of a successful Valorant journey, if you want all the tips and tricks and updated guides, smash that subscribe button because we're gonna be pumping out tons of in-depth guides and VOD reviews on this channel, so don't miss out on a single one. Now, with all that out of the way, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, the first thing that you need to do if you want to dominate your ranked placements is make sure that you find a main and you become comfortable with at least two characters. Now, ranked mode is not a place for you to be experimenting or learning a character as you go. You want to make sure that all the characters you plan on playing in ranked, you at least have about 20 games on or more. Now, I know everyone has their perfect main. Maybe you're someone like a Jet main or a Reina main, but you're not always going to be able to play your main if someone else selects it, especially if your hero is very popular. Because of this, you should at least have one other character that you're very comfortable with, and it's better to have two other characters so that you can at least comfortably flex to characters that can help you win the game, and you're not like a lost puppy wandering around. Now specifically, the three characters I would suggest you learn at least one of them is Brimstone, Sage, and Cypher, because they bring so much value to the table for little learning investment, and you can even carry with lesser mechanics on these characters compared to someone like Reyna or Jet or other dual characters, where you have to have insane mechanical skill in order to pop off consistently, and being comfortable on those characters matter immensely, as opposed to Brimstone, Sage, and Cypher. If you know the fundamentals or the basics on these heroes, then you'll bring a fair amount of value to every single game you play them in, and every single team would love to have these three characters on them. So I would highly suggest if you want to give yourself the best shot learn your main and then learn at least one of these three characters now another thing you need to do before you pick your character in every single game is take notice of your team composition and try to fill in weaknesses especially if your main hero is taken maybe you notice the team composition and there's already two duelers there's someone like a phoenix and a breach maybe you shouldn't add a raise into that mix or maybe there's a jet and a raise maybe you shouldn't add someone that is just out to get kills and instead fill it out with a healer or maybe someone that brings in utility like some other character that i already mentioned now the next big tip that i have for you if you want to make sure to give yourself the best shot in your ranked placements focus on winning the game and not chasing down kills or your kill count in general at the core of valorant ranked while other things matter like kill count and things like that they matter marginally compared to winning the game and winning it convincingly. That matters more than anything else as stated by many Riot developers. If you are holding a site and enemies keep rushing a secondary site, but they're getting shut down or shut out, don't feel like you're doing nothing. Don't try to mix up your stable strat when you're dominating the enemy just for the sake of chasing kills because this happens far too often where a player will all of a sudden start going on a flank because he feels like he's not getting any action. It doesn't really matter if you are bottom fragging every single game. If you win every placement, I guarantee you, you will be far higher ranked than if you lost three or four of your placements just trying to get a high kill count. This also means that you should be playing the role of your character. Some characters will naturally get more kills like Breach and Reyna, and they have tools to help them do so, so they should be getting those kills because it's a big part of their value. Now, a character like Sage, for example, has far lesser tools to get duels, but she can get immense value even without getting kills, and it's a greater risk for her to try to take aggressive trades and trade out because of how much value she would bring to the table if she stayed alive. Now, the third big tip that you should take into your ranked placements is spend a reasonable time before you play your ranked placements warming up your mechanics. You should first be practicing against bots in the bot room. Practice individual gunplay skills like practicing the spray control on different weapons you plan on using. Practice flicking with ops, flicking around your bots or even playing something like Kovac aim trainer. Practice counter strafing or running into walking into counter strafing and practice doing that in bots, in training, or any place that you could practice these fundamentals. Don't forget to practice the baseline like using your ghost. A pistol round could be the difference between winning multiple rounds in a row that could actually be the difference between a loss and a win. So don't be afraid to practice every single gun from the classic all the way to the operator and everything in between. After you're done completely warming up, I would highly suggest you play a practice unranked game mode. I know 
that this is a lot of practice, but you only get five games in your placements and you want to perform. You don't want to feel like you lost a game just because you weren't warmed up because that just is the worst feeling imaginable. You, you were not playing at your peak. You were not showing off your true skill and it just will make you incredibly frustrated. Trust me, I know the feeling. Then the last thing that you need to do before you get into a game and after you practice and all that stuff, just make sure that your start position is the same every single time you practice and play. You might be asking what your start position is and it's pretty easy. It's just how far you are away from the monitor, where your mouse is centered on your mat, where your chair is seated, where your keyboard is. If everything is the same, that's less things you need to adapt to each and every time. And oftentimes, if someone's aim is a little bit inconsistent, they feel like they're popping in like a practice session, and then they get on later and go into ranked, and they just feel a little off, it's usually because your starting position is a little off as well. Now moving on to the next big tip for your ranked games, and this is something that's incredibly important guys, and it's communication. Communication can carry. The term is carry with comms. Now the important thing that you need to know is that only clear, concise comms will carry these games. Things like where are the enemies located, calling out the exact position they were when you died to them, or how much damage did you do to them. The exact amount of damage you did to them, it will tell you in the stats page right after you die. Never ever, and I mean never, tell someone what to do. Simply relay information that they either don't know that you know and not them, or things that they may not be thinking about. Great examples of calls would be like time check. You say something like that if they're low on time and they need to be aware of that. Or you could say something like, you only have 15 bullets left, or you only have five bullets left. This is a way to tell them, hey, don't be caught out with these bullets. And it really helps them be like, oh, I need to reload or I need to make sure that I use these last five bullets. You could even say something like lit for X, but Sage could it healed. This is a very clear, concise calm. You're not telling them what to do. You're just relaying them information and maybe mentioning the fact that the Sage could heal them as something they might not have thought about. You could even say as the last example, like he has an op or maybe you had an op and you could say, I died with an op, he probably has it. Now the last part of communication is that if you're mad or tilted, just yell to yourself and not your teammates. Now, I know that it's hard sometimes to control tilt, but tilt is gonna lose you the game faster than anyone. And even if it doesn't affect your own play, some teammates might just throw a whole game just to piss you off because you gave them a reason to hate you so much. There's no guarantee that the people you're playing with care about their ranked games whatsoever in the same way that you do. Don't give them a reason to get mad and throw your game. Now moving on to the next big tip that I got for you, and this is using pressure to protect enemies. I covered this in depth with my Hiko Advanced Guide, but generally, remember that enemies' actions become far more predictable as pressure builds up. Pressure to plant under a certain amount of time or defuse is a big one. And as an example of this, think about the pressure it puts on someone when they have a low time left to plant, for example. If you're guarding a site and the enemy has 10 seconds to plant, they're either going to rush in or rotate, which limits the possibility for an enemy and lets you plan accordingly. They're not going to slowly, methodically come in and peek every corner because they just don't have the time. You can also use the pressure of a plant or even the sound of you planting to bait in enemies into action, which can become predictable for you to make a play on them. Here's the big takeaway for you. If you can force enemies into a bigger time crunch, then they will have subsequently easier to predict strategies and it'll be easier for you to outplay them. For example, let's say you know that an enemy is near you and you're in a 1v1 and you teleport across the map in order to plant the spike. This amps up the pressure for the enemy and allows you to easily predict him because he not only has to route all the way to the point, but defuse the spike without being able to clear every single corner. And if he does, he's gonna be under such a time crunch, he just simply doesn't have the time. This sort of pressure makes it way easier for you to potentially predict the enemy and catch him off during rotation or when he's checking the corners or even if he doesn't check the corners in the first place, you could just play the spike around an unpredictable angle and shut him down. This added pressure means that there is far less margin of error for the enemy and there's more opportunity for you to take advantage of. Now the sixth biggest tip I have for you is a reality of the situation of ranked you should be following your team's eco. Now I know I've covered many times in this channel in particular, how you should eco in a lot of different rounds, how you should play piss around and things like that. But you gotta realize your team isn't always gonna follow suit with the perfect strategy, unfortunately. That's just the reality of ranked. 
What you should do instead of holding yourself to this perfect standard of eco is instead just try to match your eco with your team as best as you can. If you could suggest to your team to save it by at the right times, that could be the best way to get on page. But sometimes teams don't want to work with you and maybe every single member on your team just incorrectly ecoed, but multiple members are buying ARs. You could choose to save if it's supposed to be a save round, but the realistic best strategy is to just buy with them and it gives you the best shot at winning as a team and that is the best way to win. Unfortunately, you got to just adapt to your situation. Now the seventh and perhaps most important thing in order to pop off in every ranked game is of course, get a gaming chair, lol. No, I'm just kidding. It's not get a gaming chair, but the real answer is make sure that you have decent tools to perform. And what am I talking about tools? I'm talking about hardware that's gonna make it easier for you to perform in game. In a game like Valorant, in my opinion, a 144 hertz monitor, a mechanical keyboard, and a gaming mouse are all necessary if you wanna play at a high level and it's gonna make your gameplay experience so much more enjoyable. And I know what you might be saying, a lot of this stuff costs a crazy amount of money, but realistically, I got my mechanical keyboard for 40 bucks, a Red Dragon from Amazon. I got a glorious Model O for 50 bucks online, mouse is like my favorite mouse of all time and I've tried all sorts of them. And I have an outdated computer, GTX 1060 Ryzen 5 2600. It's not the worst computer in the world, but it's pretty outdated and I get over 144 FPS. In a game like Valorant, while these things aren't completely necessary, like I said, it will allow you to perform much more consistently. It will make your game sessions a lot easier to play. It's gonna be easier to practice and it's gonna be easier to perform in game, which is something that I want for each and every one of you. So if there's any one of these things that you could add before you start taking the game seriously i would highly suggest one of these if not all of them as much as you can do that's better than nothing by the way make sure you smash that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on any in-depth vod reviews i actually have an insane vod review coming up where i'm gonna vod review a immortal three jet shotgun only yep that's right it's coming up real soon so be on the lookout for that and if you have any video ideas or if you have any questions or comments definitely let me know down below that's all we got for you today I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.